Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God. Amen. As always, for the glory of his cross. Amen. The of Christ. We do appreciate those of you, our listeners. Amen. That's been tuning in every day here at this noon time. We do appreciate you. Always wanting you to know that. Well, welcome to the Revealing the Truth of the Cross radio broadcast. And um, those of you that are on our Facebook, uh, Praise God Live. Um, Amen. Just turn it on and uh, Andre Otis and you should see that we're on live and uh, praise the Lord. We are getting a very good response on our live Facebook side. We do thank God for that and um, praise the Lord. And as always, uh, we want you to follow along in the word of God if you have your Bible with you or just give us, praise God, your ear and um, praise the Lord. And so we do again thank God for you, our Facebook viewers. God bless you, sister. Amen. Brother, amen. Appreciate you. We do see you there. We'll be, amen, contacting you very shortly. Praise God. And um, again, um, uh, we want you to call the 225-746-0222, 225-473-6022. Again, that's 225-746-0222 or 225-473-6022. 6-0, praise God, 2-2. Two, two. Uh, also, too, uh, those of you that's not able to catch us on the radio side, uh, not only on the Facebook as well, but uh, you can also go on the Internet. And uh, praise God, just plug in there, www.globalradiokkay.com. Usually, I get the Internet and hit in there, uh, KKAY 59 AM, and usually... You know, you go to iTunes, amen, and you should be able to open up there, praise God, and view or listen, shall I say, to the radio broadcast on the Internet side. And um, so there's all different ways now they would technology advance it to be able to do that. Before I get started, I want to again covet your prayers and uh, the Lord would continue to guide. Lead us again, for those of you we are going to be going YouTube and also then uh, uh, television. So uh, we were asking your, the prayers of all the saints of God, the people of God, uh, the Lord's direction, what station, what channel, uh, because I want to know specifically. When the Lord told the disciples to cast the net on the right side, it made no sense to cast it on the left side. Uh, I praise the Lord. I don't want to do what I want to do. Uh, Praise God. I want to do what God wants to do. I want to be according to his will uh, a lot of the things in which he is directing. And so uh, our people, our congregation has been praying and seeking God uh, along with me. And um, praise the Lord concerning the direction that the Lord is directing our church. Praise God. And taking us out of our comfort zone. Praise God. And being able to, amen, launch out a little ways into the deep and uh, finding uh, these these um, means of where to cast, praise God, the net. And so um, we will be, uh, of course, uh, informing you uh, as, as time goes on concerning what station that we'll be on um, and, uh, and so on. And hopefully everybody then is directed to uh, the station in which we will, praise God, amen, be on and trust in the Lord will be on it with us. Amen. All right. Well, let's get into the Word of God and uh, pray because time is passing by very fast here on this radio broadcast time. And um, so I want to get right to the point, to the verses of Scripture. And um, uh, I, I was really been on my heart, uh, really is just dealing with uh, the the power of, of uh, the resurrection Amen. Of Christ, not in the um, you know just the traditional mindset of it, but Christ crucified uh, has taken away sin and kneeled it to His cross. Um, he has crucified the old man. He has destroyed the devil. He has abolished death. He's conquered and uh, and and uh, 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 just victoriously over demons. Uh, the world is crucified. The law is nailed to the cross. The curse is satisfied. Um, and all of the things that we've been preaching here on the radio broadcast 
uh, concerning what the Lord has done and accomplished 2,000 years ago uh, was very, very uh, effectual. And, um, but it was even more important that he be resurrected from out of the grave and be ascended into the presence of the Father, uh, the holiest, and there is where he obtained, uh, praise God, eternal redemption when he went in there with his own blood. Usually that is the farthest in which um, um, mostly uh, that I've heard uh, is is preached, but uh, but yet he's sitting down, but he's not on a coffee break. Uh, he's ruling. Uh, he's reigning. He is in control. Uh, everything consists of him. Everything, every single thing consists of him. Things visible, things invisible. Uh, uh, principalities, powers, might, thrones, dominions, uh, even the church consists, amen, praise God, of Christ, amen, to head all authority and all rule. All power. That means is none is left for none none other. Amen. All is given unto Jesus the Christ. And there he sits at the right hand of the throne. Amen of God. The church is in a utmost important hour and time in, in which we're in, in this latter end. Praise God, right before the return of Jesus to shake this world. Praise God. And to uh, praise God, and to uh, undo what the enemy has done through false doctrines and teachings and um, just false spirits and uh, things that have crept into the full walls of the church uh, that has affected people in, in, in ways that is unimaginable. If God was to give us eyes to see uh, things in the spirit world and to see what you, what's going on inside the four walls of some of the churches today, you'll be shocked. And uh, Jesus, when he walked into the synagogues, devils started crying out instantly, we know who you are. Have you come to trouble us? Our time is not yet. And trust me, uh, a lot of times we think we're just dealing with flesh and blood, people, individuals. Sometimes you're dealing with the sin in the person, that root nature. Sometimes you're dealing with uh, demons. Sometimes you're dealing with, um, you know, just, just the, 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 the powers of darkness and, and these things that are actually happening. Now, these are things that are not occurring just within the political arena, high places of this earth today where most of decisions are made to govern uh, nations or a nation or, or states or countries or cities or whatever the case might be. Um, but th th this, and I'm not interested to be on this radio broadcast to talk to you about the powers of darkness, because I want you to understand Christ overcame all of it at Calvary. Amen. Praise the Lord. All of it. Sin has been destroyed. All of it. The devil has been destroyed. All of it. Praise God. And I am not the type of person to try to make it seem like, well, the devil is still here and making prob calls and problems, and yet sin is still in people, but it's destroyed. That's what you got to understand. And that's what you got to come to see and what you got to come to know. It don't have to work in you. Amen. It might be working in other people, but it don't have to work in you. This idea where we all, you know, sin. Everybody sin. No, that's not what, that's not what, the, what the Bible, praise God, amen, teaches. Praise the Lord. Uh, the scriptures in 1 John 3 and 5, uh, speaks and you know, you see he was manifested. And that's the question. Do you see the Christ, amen, praise God, crucified? I, I, I didn't say, do you see him dead? No, I say, do you see, amen, praise God, the Christ crucified who lives, amen, right now, who's alive right now, ruling at the right hand of the throne of God? Do you see Amen. Him as he is. Do you see what he's accomplished? Is the eyes of your heart has been illuminated by the light of the gospel of Christ that you can see what, G, uh, what Christ has done and accomplished, who he is from out of eternity, who he became in the flesh, what he did on the cross, fulfilling every uh, vision, every prophecy, praise God of the scripture, every promise of God, I mean, concerning him, he has thus so fulfilled and is at the right hand of of the throne of God. And so the Bible says, you know, you see, he was manifested. That's to those that see. Amen. Praise God. If you don't see, turn your eyes. Amen. Pray, turn your blind eyes towards Christ 
in which you're hearing, praise God, it is being preached to you. That's what blind both the males did. He couldn't see him with his natural eye, but his ear he heard, and his heart was quickened. Praise God that the son of David is walking down the road. And when he heard, he directed his blind eyes towards direction where he was hearing, amen, amen, this Christ, the son of David, walking down the road and called out to him blind, but he could hear. There's a lot of blind people, but they're hearing something. Praise God. Amen. And so I want you to be able to, they meant you listen to this gospel, turn towards the direction. Praise God. Where you're hearing the voice of the son of God speak into your heart and he will open up your spiritual blind eyes so you can see him. Praise God. As he is. That's a miracle that has to be done by Jesus the Christ. Lord of lords and king, praise God of king. But you see, he was manifested to take away our sin. In him is no sin. And whosoever bought it in him, uh-oh, sin it not. Now, that idea that everybody sin, that verse of scripture right there said that's not the case of those who are who see Christ, amen, as he is, in light of what he's done and what he's accomplished, born of God, they're inside of him where there is no sin. Stay in him, abide in him, dwell in him, praise God, and you sin it not. And so this ideal of scriptures taken out of context has been a work of the devil for uh, 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 thousands of years. Amen, amen, I say thousands of years, but less or more uh, in reference to 2,000 years since Christ went to that cross and uh, prior to it as well. But the implication is he wants to twist and change and pervert the gospel, amen, praise God of Jesus Christ. And that's the whole intent to keep, amen, people in prison and to also deceive the elect if he possibly can. And so sin is not a light issue with God. And anybody who thinks sin is a light issue of God has a rule awakening, praise God, amen. And I pray God, amen, it'd be a good awakening right now for you, praise God. But praise God, rather than be a time when you are awakened and it's going to be too late when he returns. And so, but the implication is, is that Christ right now, amen, right now lives. And there's a new creation in Christ right now. Praise God. Amen. I want to say this one more time. Praise God. He didn't done away with the old at the cross. Ain't no doubt about it. But when he came out of that grave, he came out of the grave with a new creation. And all the prophets of God, and you listen to me closely, all the prophets of God, the saints of God, prior to the cross, that loved not their lives unto death, but prophesied when God gave word to them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, <coughs> and they prophesied of these things which are now being reported to you here on this radio broadcast. And, um, uh, and, and, it, and it is fulfilled. Praise God. Christ, right now, praise God, there is no sin in Christ right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Well, we know there never was sin in him, but the implication is he took yours away, mine's away, child of God, and lost man too. And so, child of God, you're in him without the sin you used to have. That's what the Bible talking about. In him there is no sin. And so that sin that came from that devil to Adam into you and I, he took that away out of our hearts and brought us into himself where sin never was in the first place. No sin in him. And so it's as though if Adam never sinned, but we know he did. And Christ undid what he did. And so in Christ, he brings us into him after he took, uh, uh, praise God, uh, after he first, amen, took sin out of us. And so there is a new creature in Christ. The scripture is very plain. Don't fuss and argue what the scripture says. And so if there's any scripture you come across that sounds like it's contradicting another scripture, that's not the case. There's something about the scripture that has to be plainly brought out and presented because going there with your carnal mind you're going to mix scriptures together. You're going to see there's a conflict, which really there is no conflict with the word of God. Amen. But there's things that need to be clarified by those who understand the scripture. The eunuch told Philip, when Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? And the, Philip told, uh, the eunuch told Philip, how can I accept the man? Amen. Praise God. Give me understanding. And so it, 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 a blind can't uh, lead the blind in the truth. The blind only can lead the blind into a ditch 
That's the words of the Lord. That's not my words. That's the words of the Lord. And so the implication is, is that it takes one that the Lord has opened their eyes. Amen. Praise God. And this is where the church is in a very grand of opportunity to lead the blind to Christ. Don't lead them to yourself. You lead them to Christ. Praise God. Point them to Jesus Christ. And uh, this matter here in Romans, the first chapter, and into verse number four, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection, praise God, amen, from the dead. And I trust that God will give me utterance to be able to show you, amen, by the Scripture, by the Spirit, Amen. Praise God. Uh, the Son of God, Jesus, the Christ, amen, our Lord, amen, which was, who was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, but now, verse 4, had declared, has been declared to be the Son of God, amen, with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection, praise God, from the dead. There's no doubt in my mind that when he, the word Logos came into the flesh, the tie between Joseph and Mary that comes out of the lineage of David is how, amen, Joseph married the mother of Jesus and made it a legal tie, amen, praise God, to the lineage. Mary, praise God, being the mother of Jesus, also Jesus is tied twice to, praise God, the lineage, so, so to speak, of David. Now, Joseph's blood had nothing to do with this at all whatsoever. The birth of Jesus, the son of the living God, who we know now has been made to be both Christ and also our Lord. And so then the implication here is that God is not declaring him, praise God, the seed of David. Praise God, by the resurrection. That was done by way of the word being made flesh, born into this world. Jesus, amen, the son of the living God. And so now Christ, Jesus, our Lord, praise God, or the son of God, is declared now. He's declared to be the son of God. He's not in the flesh any longer. Uh, I did not say he did not have a bone and flesh body right now, but he's been glorified. Praise God, we do understand that after the resurrection, praise God, from the dead, that Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, after his resurrection, walked through the walls. Amen? And we, we understand that Thomas was able to touch that flesh, bone, body, take his finger, thrust it into the side in which was imprinted there, amen, by, amen, this piercing, praise God, of the soldiers. And so the implication there is, is that uh, we know he has a flesh bone body. Some of you are going to be shocked, amen, praise God, when you see Jesus come to them clouds. And then when you get to heaven, you're going to see Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, laying down all authority, rule, and power and giving it to the Father. And some of you are going to say, well, I thought he was God. I thought he was. And all your Trinity doctrines and stuff you can't confirm, amen, according to Scripture, amen, plain is laid out in the Scripture, you're going to be shocked, amen. I'm telling you that God has raised up his Son. Jesus is the born Son of God, the Word that was made flesh, Logos that was made flesh. And I understand, amen, the power and the majesty, praise God, of the Lord in his first appearance when he was made flesh. And people take a stand back and say, oh, he's God. Well, who was he calling Father? Amen, praise God. Who was he calling Father and who God was calling his Son? God has declared, praise God, amen, Jesus, amen, to be his Son, praise God, what power, Praise God, according to the spirit of holiness. And I want you to hear this because this is very vital. He's always been, amen, the spirit of holiness. The spirit of holiness came and took on the flesh bone uh, body of the son, Jesus. And so what happens is, is that, but it's by the resurrection from the dead. By the resurrection from the dead. When he was in the flesh, praise God, amen. They would say, son of David. When he's in the flesh, God said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. He spoke that twice, praise God, from heaven. Now, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, 
the Son of the living God, our Lord, is now declared, amen, to be the Son of God, praise God, wood saving, redeeming, cleansing, washing, praise God, miraculous power, praise God, to take sin, praise God, the old man, praise God, from out of the soul of an individual right now, right now. Praise God, because he rules at the right hand of the throne of God. And so the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, is just as vital as the death of Jesus the Christ, amen, the Son of God. What he did in that cross, that cross, praise, he couldn't accomplish, praise God, in his resurrection. What he did in his resurrection could not be accomplished until he do what he had to do in his death. And so then what was done in his death, praise God, is now made available for all of those who repent, believe, and call, and look to, praise God, the Son of God who is the Lamb of God right now, amen, through the gospel, amen, that is being preached, and call on him and watch him come to you. Amen. Watch him come to you. Glory to God. He'll come to you right where you are. Praise God. If you repent and believe and call on him and act him, praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God to save your soul. Thank God that the, the resurrection, I love this verse of scripture. I talked about it just a little bit on yesterday before our time had expired. And uh, verse of scripture over here that, you know, that everybody who says, well, I believe he rose from the dead. Well, it's not just believing he rose from the dead, but what did he accomplish when he rose up from the dead? It's not just saying, well, I believe he died. Well, what did he do? What did he do when he died? Because Abraham and all the saints of God, they're fellowshipping this now. Paul is fellowshipping it now. Peter's fellowshipping it. Amen. Praise God. And forever now. Praise God. And they're participating of this in the, in, the, in the presence of God. Praise God Almighty. While their bodies lay in the grave. Praise God. But they, praise God, are there in the presence. Amen. Of the Lord. Absent from the body is to be present from the Lord with the Lord. The last enemy that shall be destroyed. Praise God is death. Praise God. The last one that, that amen, that God shall put under. Praise God, Jesus, right? And it shall be no more. Is that all you're looking forward to? You need to look forward to something right now. Praise God that he died and took away the sin. Praise God that so many says is we all got sin. We all got a sin nature. We all got a uh, whatever. Every child of God got a sin nature and a divine nature that ain't nowhere in the Bible. The Bible don't even teach that. That's not in the scriptures. Praise God. Hallelujah. That don't even fit. Behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. What part of taken away that people do not understand? Look at this here, this concerning the power of the resurrection of the Son of God, of the Christ crucified. Praise God. Look what it says. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Look what hinges, praise God, on the fact that Christ is raised from the dead. And if he's not risen from the dead, all of our believing is total vain. It's for no use, for no good at all whatsoever. You don't even need to look forward going to heaven. You don't even need to look forward that when you leave this life, you're going to be in the presence of the Lord after everybody. You don't even need to look forward to that happening if Christ has not been raised from the dead. But because Christ is resurrected from the dead, that's why there are scriptures such as that. Praise God. Amen. Absent from the body is to be present. Praise God with the Lord. Let me tell you something. Praise God. You don't have to just be absent from this body to be present. Amen. With the Lord. Because the Lord can be present with you while you're still in that body. Amen. He can be present with you while you're still in that body. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. Some of you just want to be with Jesus when he returns. But don't want to be with him right now. Don't want him to be with you right now. Amen. You want to live your own life, make your own choices, your own decisions, live how you want to live, whatever the case might be. And one day, you know, when I die, I'm going to take up my wings and fly to glory. You are deceived, my friend. Praise God, because we ain't going to take on no wings at all whatsoever because Jesus ain't got no wings. 
Amen. Praise God. What you want to be like the angels for? He was made better than the angels. No little lower than the angels when he was in the flesh. But inherited more excellent name than the angels of God. Because he's a son of God and God never said to any angel at any time, Thou art my son. And so then this matter here. Praise God. How do you know you believe in the resurrected Christ? Because you're no longer in your sin. If you believe in the power of the risen Christ crucified, praise God, and is sitting at the right hand of God, and if you believe in the resurrected Christ, then you are no longer in your sin, and your faith, amen, is profitable. Amen. And your faith is profitable. Then they also, which are fallen asleep in Christ, are perish if Christ has not been raised up, praise God, from the dead. If Christ didn't come out of that grave, then those who have, have, who have fallen asleep in Christ are perished, burning in hell. Amen. Right now, then that means Abraham is in hell, Isaac in hell, and Jacob is in hell. If Christ, praise God, would not have come out of that grave. And because they were looking forward to the resurrection of the Christ after after that he would come and die as the Lamb of God slain to redeem from sin, to redeem from the curse of the law, to abolish death, praise God, and resurrect what a new creation because that was the case. This is why Abraham, when he died, he didn't go to hell. He went to that place on the other side of hell. Call it paradise. Call it a holding place. Call it what you want to call it. But everybody after that, the Bible says, was in the bosom of Abraham. Praise God. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. That's right. That's right. But now, now Abraham is in the presence of God. Isaac in the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Jacob is in the presence of God because Jesus took the sin that was in them and kneeled it to the cross. Jesus took the sin that entered this world in the heart of man and destroyed it on his cross. And when he came out of that grave, came and sin and death could not hold Praise God, the saints of God, amen, in that holding place because the Lamb of God had come and nailed it to his cross. Praise God. And so those who are fallen asleep are not perished because Christ is risen. Look at verse number um, 20. I love this. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them, praise God, that slept. Amen. That slept. Oh, isn't that something? That slept. They're awake now. They're awake now. Praise God. They're awakened into the presence of God. Praise God Almighty now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because Christ came out of the grave and the power of the resurrection of the Son of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Who is with? Amen. Praise God. That miraculous power, that miracle itself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Where the he that the Son make free is free. Praise God indeed. And only the Son abides in the house. Amen. Forever. He was not just talking about himself. He's talking about every person who was a slave in their sin, but have repented and believed the gospel and have come to know the truth and the truth has made them free. They're not just disciples. They're sons of God. They're daughters of God. Their God is their father and God is their God and Jesus is their Lord and he is their Christ and he, praise God, hallelujah, amen, precious Savior, is the one who calls us brethren, who's not ashamed to call the children of God brethren. He said, why? Because he that's sanctified and they who are made holy, praise God, are all of one. He's brought us into the house, the whole, the family of God. And so the sons of God dwells inside the house, amen, of God. Just like in natural slavery, the slaves slept in the barns and in the cabins, amen. But but praise God, souls who are in their sin, they're not in the house of God. They're not in the kingdom of God. They're not inside of Christ. Oh, wake up out there. Pray and repent and believe that the Lamb of God has come to wash you and to purge you and to cleanse you from all sin and all, praise God, your unrighteousness. Wake up! 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Tomorrow is not promised to you. The next moment is not promised to you. Praise God. You're not getting younger. You're getting older. I don't care what your age is. You're getting closer to the grave and closer to the return of Jesus Christ. You must wake up. Praise God. They're dying young today. Amen. Death is not, amen, partial. Sin is not partial. Amen. And all whatsoever, don't care who you are, rich or poor, white, black, it don't matter what your race is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Repent and believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ so you can be a partaker of the better resurrection. Praise God of the Christ from the dead. Praise God. Those that are dead with Christ lives with Christ. Hallelujah. Those that are dead to sin lives with Christ free. Praise God. Amen. From sin. That's the word of God. That's the power. Amen. Of the Christ crucified who is risen. Praise God from the dead. We're not preaching a dead Jesus. We preaching him who was dead. Praise God. But now he liveth. Praise God forevermore. That's why we spend all the time on every opportunity that's given to us to preach this gospel of the Christ according to, amen, the scriptures. I don't have time to be dealing with metaphorical or theo theological views and all of these different things and talking to you about yourself and your success and how you do this and how you don't do it and all that. Food. I'm going to tell you about the risen Christ who is able, amen, to save you, praise God, to the utmost. Praise God, hallelujah. I love this verse of scripture over in the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews, praise God. Oh, let's see, praise God, page, uh, chapter number seven. Glory to God, chapter number seven. And I'm going to just read just a few verses of scripture here. And I'll just start verse number 22. But by such, so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they uh, truly were many priests. Because they were not suffered to continue by reason, praise God, amen, of death. And uh, praise God, but this man, because he continued ever, had an unchangeable priesthood. Now, Jesus died. The Christ died. Ain't no doubt about that. But he was raised from the dead. And so he's a guarantee of a better covenant, a better testament. Because not just that he died, but God raised him from the dead. Amen. He's been suffered to continue. The other priest died, and another high priest rose up. He died. Another high priest rose up. He died. Another high priest rose up. He died. They were not the guarantee of the new covenant. Amen. They were not the guarantee of the new covenant. They were ordained under the Leviticus priesthood, which could never make anybody perfect pertaining to those sacrifices of the Old Testament. Nobody under Leviticus priesthood was made complete. None of them, praise God, because he couldn't take sin out of the soul of man and out of the mind and conscience and thoughts of man. He couldn't remove sin. Listen to me, folks. That's simple. Don't fuss with that. Don't argue with that. Man, don't give yourself no license to continue with a sin nature that God didn't put in you. The devil put that. The, the, to add to disobedience. That's where sin came from. The devil. Why fuss and argue with a filthy nature called sin and may try to make justification means of it? Well, Jesus just died to cover our sin. He just died for the, pay, for the penalty of our sin. He paid the sin debt. You don't know no, he took sin away. That's what he did. He took sin away. That's what he did. He destroyed sin. That's what he did. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That's what he did when he died. That's when he did it. When he died. Praise God. Hallelujah. But he rose from the dead. And so then he's a surety, a guarantee, amen, of a better testament. And look at this here. And, but this man, because he continued ever, 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 he lived forever. Amen, hallelujah. Had an unchangeable priesthood. There'll never be another high priest. Amen, praise God, beside the Christ. There'll never be another high priest after Jesus, the son of the living God. There'll never be. There ain't no need for another because this high priest, amen, has taken his body, his blood. He is also the lamb and offered himself up without spot to God, purged your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He is the one who purged our sin. He is the one who did that and accomplished that when he died. And all of those of you that questions that shame on you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Praise because you're going to answer. Praise God because you don't understand. 
the power of this eternal Christ. You don't understand the power of the gospel and how much it affects, praise God, forever those who repent and believe upon the Christ crucified who is who is alive forevermore because God raised him up from the dead. The first man, the first son of God that was ever raised up from the dead. There never was a son of God ever died and rose again the third day. Never. Never. There ain't no prophet you can compare to him. I don't care if the widow woman got her son raised on the day. He wasn't the son of God. Amen. I, I don't care. Pray, I don't care. Lady Elijah, Elisha, whichever one of them that was translated up. Enoch. Enoch was translated up as well. Praise God. But he wasn't the son of God. Amen. Praise God. He wasn't born of God. Hey, Jesus, the Christ, is the first born son of God that ever died and rose up three days later. My God, you're not believing on some fairy tale. This is the power of, amen, of the eternal Christ. The power of an endless life. Amen. That's what the Bible says over here. Praise God. I, I hope I ain't too far ahead. But he said this. He said, well, for he is able also to save them to the utmost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth, seeing he ever liveth, Amen. What is he doing up there? Somebody, I don't know. Somebody said, I don't know what he's doing up there. I'm going to tell you what the scripture said, what Jesus Christ is doing up there. It's in your Bible. Read your Bible. It's going to tell you what Jesus Christ is doing up there. This is what he's doing up there. The Bible said, he ever live it to make intercession for them. Who is them? Them, amen, who comes unto God. Why is this here now? Amen. In him, by him, through him. It don't matter. But by, by Jesus Christ. Oh, well, you couldn't come by Jesus Christ if he was still dead. You couldn't come by Jesus Christ if he was still in the grave. You couldn't come by Jesus Christ if he's still hanging on the cross. You couldn't come by Jesus Christ, amen, if his body is rotten and corrupted in the grave, but his flesh saw no corruption because sin, number one, had no power over his body because it was not conceived and shaped by iniquity. It was conceived of God, prepared of God, praise God, and so it could not hold him in the grave, but God resurrected him up from out, praise God, of the grave and set him at his own right hand. And there, he's ready. He's waiting for you. Praise God to come, amen, unto God by him. Praise God, whoever liveth, making intercession. Praise God, praise God, amen, for them. Well, you know, praise God, my time is up and always flies by. We do thank God for those of you. Praise God, we're going to see you. Praise God next time. Look to the resurrected Christ crucified who died and liveth. Praise God forever. Praise God more. God bless you, our Facebook followers. We do appreciate those of you. Amen. Hallelujah. This is real. This is not a game. This ain't no Santa Claus story. Praise God. This is a reality. Praise God. And you know it's a reality. Praise the Lord. And so look to the Lord. He ain't up there on no coffee break. He rule. He reign. He make it in a session. Praise God. From the right hand of God Almighty, all authority is given to him in heaven and also in the earth. Amen. There is nothing that is impossible with him. Nothing at all. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. The son of the father. Glory to God, hallelujah. Amen. Ever live it and rules and reigns, praise God, at the right hand, amen, of God Almighty. Well, I tell you what, God bless you, praise God. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, I don't care if you're lost, you'll be saved. I don't care if you're going through someone, praise God. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, he will deliver, he will make free, he will make provision, he will heal, he will cure, he will do the things in which he does according to his will. God bless you. Amen. We'll see you. Glory to God next time.